Now, ionic bonding, Mr. Sands, we learned in our last podcast, mm -hmm. is a bond between a... Metal! Metal to what? Non-metal. So we've got a metal bonded to non-metal getting attracted by the external electrons called the valence electron. Yep. So let's kind of dive in and get some more details okay. on this. All right. The key thing, and we talked about this briefly in the last podcast, is there's a transfer of electrons. Yeah. They want to fulfill the octet rule. So here I have an element. We've got some internal electrons. I'll make them X's or something like that or whatever. But this guy has got two valence electrons right here. Mm -hmm. This character over here has got uh, six. six. Mm -hmm. So they all want to achieve eight. So to achieve eight, the guy with the red, he can like give his two electrons away. Right. So now and the one on the right has eight. And actually, this guy on the left Wait, has how is, eight. Wait, how is 2 minus 2 equal 8, Mr. Murphy? Well, it's because the lower level, we haven't really drawn that, but there would be there would be 8. I'll put them as X's instead of dots. There would be 8 electrons in that oh, previous so level. So 0 is equal to 8. eight. Yeah, that's, Interesting. that's a fair okay. way to say it. All 0 right. is equal to 8 in the atomic world. All right. So these have, atoms are not happy. Happy, I'm happy, go happy, be happy. Happy meaning eight valence electrons. Eight, yeah, stable so is a better the, word. So if the one on the left gives its two to the one on the right, two minus two equals zero, and zero equals eight, yeah. the one on the left, and then the six on the right plus six the two, two is eight. gives us eight. Good. And so okay. here you can kind of see, I have drawn that, he's moving over to the side. And now something else important happens uh -huh is that what happens is he gets a charge. So if it loses the two electrons, it gets a plus two charge. That is correct. electrons are negatively charged. And this guy gains two electrons, symbolized by the red dots, uh -huh. and he gets a negative two charge because electrons charge. are negatively charged. That's correct. Cool. Okay. And so, then opposites attract. So the plus actually, two attracts the minus yeah, two. Actually, let's go back and say something about that. Because yeah. what happens is, is, actually, you know, I think I drew this wrong, is this outer electron shell Kinda doesn't gone. exist. Yeah. So he's going to be smaller with say two circles, and this guy's gonna be bigger with all of his circles, mm -hmm. but he's gonna have a plus two charge, and he's gonna have a minus two charge, and then they're going to attract to each other because opposites attract. Yeah, cool. So that's what causes an ionic bond. Electrons transfer, there's opposite charges, they attract, they make a bond. Cool. Okay, some definitions just to kind of get some uh, words out there for you guys. A halide is a salt that contains a Halogen. Now, what's a halogen? Mr. Halogen Sands? are everything in group, uh, the fluorine group. Fluorine, 17, fluorine, yeah. yeah, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, so iodine. Fluorine, chlorine, a bromine, iodine. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. You can say acetine, but that's the rarest element on the in the universe, so you're probably not going to run into that. Yeah. So if I have, you know, so example, sodium chloride. There's that Cl there. But if I have, say, iron three bromide, that also would be a halide. Right. Okay. And crystal lattice. Yeah. Okay, is a repetitive arrangement of atoms in an ionic compound. I just jot that down. We'll put some more meat on that in just yeah. a second. Now, one other definition, Mr. Sams, I think we probably should uh, uh, emphasize is the word salt. Mm -hmm. When you think of salt, folks, most of you are thinking of what you put on your French fries at lunch mm -hmm. at McDonald's. But French that's not fries. the correct term in, um, in chemistry. What does the word salt mean? Uh, salt is equivalent to an ionic compound. Any ionic compound can be referred to as a salt. Now, table salt is sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound. Therefore, we can call it salt, just fine. Going back to the crystal lattice thing, Mr. Sams, a lot of students understand that either. And so I want us to take a tailor to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Should we go there? Let's do it. All right, let's go to Washington, D.C. and see uh, Me. Mr. Sams. Yeah, he was there. We so, were there. Yeah, we were there. I videoed it. Okay, we'll see you guys back in a minute. So here I am inside the sodium chloride crystal and we have alternating positive and negative. The sodium being the red, the chloride being the blue, alternating positive and negative, positive and negative, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, forever and ever and ever until you get to the edge of the crystal. But there's billions and billions of these in just one little piece of salt like there is on your french fry. That was pretty cool Mr. Sams. It's yeah. kind of fun being inside all that salt. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can just see the one crystal connected to one crystal. Mm -hmm. So, the Na connected to the Cl, connected to the Na, connected to the Cl. It goes on and, and, on, and on and, and on. on. And I could draw this and forever, on. Yeah, but I won't. In fact, there's a picture where it is drawn. Yeah, it's so like little spheres. pretty it's, much. Yeah, but it was that. cooler when you were inside of it. It I was. Think. Yeah. So, yeah, one sodium for every chloride. Yeah. So, um, ionic compounds have particular properties, Mr. Sams. Yes, they do. Um, one of the properties is that they are all solid at room temperature. All right, let's take a look at a few of those. Yeah, let's take a look at those. 
One property of ionic compounds is that they are solid at room uh, temperature. They're all solid because they have strong bonds. And so um, they also tend to be brittle. We're looking here at some rock salt um, right here, these crystals here of rock salt. You also might notice that they're like a cubic shape. They have specific shapes and crystal shapes. So this is salt. If we move over to this next chemical, this right here is iron 3 chloride, and it's a yellow substance, and it tends to be brittle, so I can kind of break it off here, and you can see um, tiny little yellow crystals right there. And again, notice that it's also a solid. Our next chemical is a nickel um, 1 nitrate, and so it's green. Oops, sorry. And you can kind of see the tiny little crystals right there. They're flaky. If somehow we could super zoom in, we could probably figure out what their crystal shape is. It's hard to tell the, without some kind of a microscope. And then our last one is potassium chloride. It looks just like table salt as well. And it's all kind of very fine and granular, as you can see right here. Again, notice that it's also a solid. All ionic compounds are always solid.